Good morning, everybody. This is Kim Danke coming to you live from the Shibola Studios in Kennesaw, Georgia. Today is Monday, March 8th, 2021, and we are on day 67 in the 365-day game of life, the 2021 edition, and I hope that you're playing along with me. We gotta play every day to be able to win the game. When you hop on here this morning, please say good morning, where you're watching from and what type of Shibboleth day you are having. Um, I had a holiday on yesterday. I had a perfect day on Saturday. I battled Travis in a three-day battle buddy and weight loss wise, I won because I had a holiday right before I started the battle and that was in my favor, and Travis hardly has anything left to lose, I would think, I don't know. But it takes a couple of days for the Battle Buddy results to come in. So, but weight-wise, I, I won. But anyway, it's just fun to look every day and know you're doing something. So if you haven't had a battle with somebody ever, there is in the Silver Level videos, a tutorial topic section, and one is how to set up a Battle Buddy. You'll learn some special things that you need to do to your account before setting up your battle buddy. And then you can battle a friend on the website. Hey, good morning, Ron from Lilburn. Having a perfect day. Good morning, Shibby Shop Sherry. Good morning, Michelle Harper. IMF Day in Carrollton, Georgia. Sherry's having a perfect day as well. Good morning, Kristen from Kennesaw. Perfect day today. She's on Jason's EFB Challenge for week two. Way to go, Kristen. That's awesome. Good morning, Diane. Thank you for sharing. I hope you have an awesome day too. Good morning, Linda Warren. Hey there, perfect day, Cave Spring, Georgia. Glad you're on here with us this morning. Good morning, Alicia. It was good to see you this weekend at the Shibby Shop. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Amy from Ohio and Intermittent Fasting Perfect Day. Okay, so she's so excited. Dan is down seven pounds in his first week and completed phase one as well. Awesome, way to go, that is fabulous. Awesome, I love it. Hey, good morning, Polly, perfect day in Dalton. Good morning, Ann Fitzgerald from Ackworth, having a perfect day. Yay, I'm glad we're having some perfect days today. It's gonna be an awesome and great day. Now. I live in Kennesaw, Georgia, and it is sunshiny out there, and I'm so thankful for that. Woo, Sandy Gregg, wow. Good morning, and she is in the middle of a 36-hour fast. Well, bless your heart, meaning you do it. Bless you, bless you, bless you, you do it. That is fabulous, Sandy. You are training yourself and your body, and you're giving your body a break. Awesome. Hey, good morning, Becky. Perfect day in Lake City, Florida. And Robin, good morning. Um, having a holla meal tonight. Awesome. That is a good plan, a holla meal. All right. Good morning, Pamela. Pamela, it was so great to see you at the Shibby Shop and Gina on Saturday. Having a perfect day, Pamela is. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with our devotion this morning. Our devotion is Made to Crave by Lisa Turkhurst. It's a 60-day devotional. And today's devotion is called, But Victory Seems So Far Away. And the verse, if you'll type it in, is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Hey, Lavelle Brewer! Good morning. I love you too. I miss y'all. Um, okay, so there are days where I don't feel victorious, like the day when the upstairs toilet clogged and flooded my kitchen ceiling, or the day I got stuck in traffic, yelled at my kids, and missed an important meeting. Those are the days when my long-term goals to get healthy don't feel as important as my need for immediate comfort. I just want to blow my healthy eating plan out of frustration with something gooey, sweet, and cream laden. I bet you've had something occur this week that doesn't make you feel victorious either. A sick child, a missed deadline, tension in a friendship, or a number on the scale that almost made you cry. I understand 
But may I encourage you, even in the midst of trying circumstances and bad days, you can be victorious. You can be victorious even when the distance between your present reality and your desired goal seems so far apart. How? Set many goals. Losing 20, 50, 100 pounds or more can seem so far away. And faraway goals are hard to hang on to when life drains us and it feels like those French, French fries sure could fill us. Set many goals physically by getting a strategy for making healthy choices. How can you prepare now to drink eight glasses of water today? What is a healthy snack option you'll turn to when those afternoon salty and sugary cravings start calling? Are you going out to eat at a restaurant? Use the internet to look up the nutritional information for their menu, or you can just use the Shavola website in our case. So you can make informed, healthy choices. If hit with an unexpected temptation today, what healthy go-to script or Bible verse can you arm yourself with in advance to combat justifications and compromises? Each mini goal you accomplish today is a moment of victory. We can also set mini goals spiritually. We will always be most victorious when we, are, when we are at the center of God's will. When we are in God's will, we are able to see our trials from God's perspective through the lens of his grace and truth. But what is God's will? The Apostle Paul wrote, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks, for it is God's will. This is an explicit description of what God's will is. To be in the center of God's will is to be a person who is joyful, prayerful, and thankful. Be joyful. Intentionally look around for measures of joy each day. There is joy in simply being alive and being redeemed by God. Remember, joy is a choice we make, not a feeling we hope to get from our circumstances. It's good to look for the good, to celebrate it even in small ways. Doing so is a moment of victory. Be prayerful. Focus your thoughts on God through prayer. When I was tempted with unhealthy choices, it used to trigger a pity party. Now I turn my temptations into triggers to pray. Turning to God rather than turning to food in a moment of victory. Be thankful. When I focus on how much weight I still need to lose, it brings me down and I start entertaining thoughts of defeat. However, when I focus on all that I'm gaining with God through the process of losing the weight, it makes me all the more determined to keep going. What is something positive you've gained during your weight loss journey so far? God's activity can be seen much more readily when we focus on what we do, when we focus on what we do have rather than what we don't have. Oh my goodness, sounds like Travis. Um, we can't control our circumstances, but we can control our choices. Setting many goals physically and spiritually positions us for victory today. Indeed, you can be victorious even when the distance between your present reality and your desired goal seems so far apart. What do y'all think about that today? I think it's awesome. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning from Michigan. Good morning. Um, let's see. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18, Michelle Harper. Uh, good morning, everybody. Let's see. Jennifer, Jennifer, perfect day. 60 degrees this afternoon, getting back to walking her miles in Niles, Michigan. That's awesome. Good morning, Suzanne from Madisonville, Kentucky. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that is really, really great. Um, and if, if you've been a person that has been in church for a while, you've heard that verse and you've heard those things. But it's really great to have them broken down in a way that we can use them in our, in our life that we do right now. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today that is not necessarily from this devotional is something that we talked about in class on Saturday. We talked about it longer in class on Saturday, but I'm going to just make it really brief today. It's going to be, let's not push the limits. 
So we talked about pushing the limits. You know, it, it's kind of like we all want to get absolutely everything that we can. And so we push the limits a little bit. And so let's talk about condiments. Okay, 50 calories of condiments is what we can have if something has a label and we can look at the back and see a five and two, okay, a five and two. But if you're talking about something that doesn't have a label, okay, if you don't know that rule, y'all just watch the Monday night webinar tonight. But if it doesn't have a label, let's say onion or tomato or something like that, you don't want to figure up how many 50 calories is of that because the amount of that, if it's a quarter cup or more, which could easily be a small onion, you got to call that a category three, okay? So we're talking a smidge of something. So on Monday nights, when I give the explanation of using maybe onion or tomato as part of your 50 calories and condiments, if you choose to use those on a meal, that it shouldn't be any thicker than your pinky, okay? So a thin, a thin slice of onion, a thin slice of tomato. Let's not work at trying to figure out how to push the limits. Because if you're looking at calories on a tomato or an onion or something that doesn't have a label on it, a lot of times those don't have a lot of calories, but they still have the sugary fructose that brings that insulin release. So if you're looking at a quarter cup or more of those things, they need to be considered a category three so that, so that you can combine that properly with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So let's not try to push the limits. And Condiments really were meant to be on like category one through seven meals, not necessarily just randomly added to meal replacements. A meal replacement already has everything that it needs in there, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind, all right? Hey, good morning, Patty Bass. I see you on there. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so just wanna talk about that pushing the limits and think about whether or not you are pushing the limits. I was talking to a lady last Thursday night at our Cartersville class, and she was wanting to lose some weight before um, she's going on a trip, and she kind of felt like she had stalled for a little couple of weeks, and I asked her that. I asked her, I said, hey, I got a question for you. I said, I don't know you. I've just met you tonight, but are you pushing the limits at all? Are you pushing the limits at absolutely everything that you could get in in a day, and it'd still be a legal perfect day? And she looked at me and she goes, yeah, actually I am. I said, okay, well then let's just do breakfast, lunch, and dinner and you'll get to those goals, okay? So sometimes we have to think about that. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. I love seeing you and Kimberly and Grace Anna sing that song the other day, the one you did in the black and white and put it on the story. So awesome. So awesome. All right. Well, y'all, I'm going to read her prayer real quick. Dear Lord, help, to help me to remember that no matter how far away my goal may seem, I am victorious when I am in the center of your will. Today, I will intentionally look for your joy as I pray out for a thankful heart in Jesus' name. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. Um, so, y'all go right now and declare your day. Remember, you determine your day. Your day does not determine you. And also, um, if you're watching on replay, please type in hashtag Shibboleth for his glory with a capital H. Polly, I understand. I understand. But let's think about that. Let's think about why we're pushing the limits and if maybe really, really didn't need to in that situation. So just uh, be easier on yourself than pushing the limits. All right. Bye, everybody.